When a new world is born, ancient powers of the elemental planes contribute. Welcome to us being here on purpose. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know who's running this stream. We gotta. We gotta find a new producer, probably. But um, <laughs> welcome to the Fate Forge Academy. I am your uh, producer and showrunner of lots of things here at the Fate Forge Academy, Stephen. Um, welcome. We're really glad <laughs> that you're here. Um, a couple things before I turn everything over to Chris. Um, one, we're in the Reclamation Project. We're doing some adventures in Avastria. Uh, this is the first campaign ever in the Fae Forge Academy world that has not been run by me, which is super cool to be a player in your own world. Um, so that's that's a lot of fun. Uh, the Fae Forge Academy on the whole is a fifth edition podcast, uh, and we do and we do mini campaigns like this one on stream, uh, and it's all tied together. Uh, so you can go to FaeForgeAcademy.com uh, and find out more about that. Uh, we are part of the Roll20 Spotlight program, so thanks so much to Roll20 for providing us lots of really fun tools to, uh, you know, explore and use uh, and create some really chaotic, fun characters in this. Uh, we are also affiliated with Found Familiar Coffee, uh, so if you use Fayforge uh, on checkout to go get your coffee, it's in my mug right now. It's, it's, I mean, I'm... I would say I'm biased, but I I just love... Oh, I have our content warning for Baldur's Gate. Gosh, yeah, this producer is just a wreck. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, amazing coffee. Uh, it's all part of the TTRPG world. Also, their bags have the best art of any coffee company on Earth, in my opinion, because uh, it's all D&D &D art, um, which is very cool. We are also affiliated with Greenleaf Geek, so if you go to greenleafgeek.com and use the code... Uh, Faith Forge on checkout there. You also get 10% off your orders. Uh, and uh, I think... Oh, last thing is, if you are here and you're new here, uh, we have basically one overarching rule uh, at the Faith Forge Academy, and that's respect. We respect people's pronouns. We respect people's gender identities. We respect people's races, where, they, where they've where they come from, their experience. Uh, we don't use any forms of bigotry or anything like that. And if any of that does show up, uh, our mods kick you out immediately, and we don't give second chances. Um because who people are is more important than your biases. Um, so with that, uh, why don't these lovely people who I'm with uh, introduce <laughs> yourselves uh, and then we'll and then we'll jump into uh, what we got today. Uh, so B, say hi. Hello, like the most prepared person I am, uh, I'm B, uh, podcaster streamer. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as at B underscore Zelda. And I'm joining y'all playing Morticia and Adam. Morticia is a rogue fairy, you know, who hails from the Feywilds. They've lived a really full life, none of which can be remembered. Uh, so we catch them here about to board this airship with no intention of actually doing combat and i cannot wait to see what happens <laughs> leona make sure i'm unmuted first hello my name is leona you can find me on twitter at the leona maple and today i am playing our beloved uh sorcerer warforged precious being clueless character all around uh and her name is sunflower prince Hey everybody, I'm Prince, also known as Doubles of Dice around the internet, and I'm playing your favorite old man of this game, the best old man, Drassus, the Minotaur young, warrior. Young pup. young pup, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's a baby cow? A calf? Little calf. Yeah. Baby oh. <laughs> calf? Oh. Oh, Vincent's going to start calling you a calf. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, whoa, I'm, like, punching everything. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and Chris. Hey everyone, um, I'm Chris Geary. I am your uh, DM for the Reclamation Project. And uh, you can find me on the internet at Chris Geary uh, on Twitter. And let's make our way back to the airship via the bumper video. Okay.
When a new world is born, ancient powers of the elemental planes contribute to its creation. First, Duin, the Molten Lord, and his wife, Arias, the Heart of Planets, arrive, forming the foundation upon which all life may thrive. Following the Terran Elder's lead, the ancients of water and air fill the seas and skies, creating currents by which the four winds and the waterways must abide. Finally, the Fire Ancient, old as time itself, ignites the planet Sunstar, illuminating the surface and warming the soil. With the planes reconnected to Avastria and the heart of Arias returned, the propagation of planets is no longer impeded. Unlike some, my knowledge is limited, so when I set our heroes to reconnect their fates to the Order of Eight, I could never have foreseen the presence of such a being like Duwin of the Stone. I hope our friends took to heart the wisdom shared in the Eightfold Chamber, now colloquially known as the Vault of Riverheart. From the depths of the copper mines to the skies, we rejoin our four adventurers aimlessly floating above the sea with trouble brewing in the hold of a Nereen airship. Welcome back, y'all. I hope you enjoyed the uh, glimpse into um, Duin, the Molten Lord, or Duin of Stone, um, our um, ancient Earth Elemental, uh, lovingly known as Dwayne the Earth Elemental Johnson. Uh, and uh, the, the history of what is going on there as the planes are reconnecting little bit by little bit much is changing in avastria slow in the immediate sense pretty quick if we think about it in terms of millennia but um that's not the biggest concern right now the biggest concern is there is a conflict aboard a Nareen airship. Below decks, there are now seven, as one of them was scared off, and um, people, what looks like a costing for, um, based on their garb and aesthetics, what look to be uh, citizens of Nareen, we had an explosion that launched the ship from the um, port of the calling out over the sea. And we return to Drassus, who um, was below decks with Morticia riding shotgun, and Sunflower at the stairs kind of moments away from the combat itself. And uh, our lovely Vincent on deck using some of the rigging to hold himself steady as the listless or aimless ship floats away. But we have combat, so let us roll for initiative. Initiative! Alright. What did you say, Kelsey? Do we have tokens? Can I click my token? Yes, you should have tokens on your character sheets. In theory.
Okay, y'all should be able to hear us now. I'm gonna fix the other thing. I don't know why, but when we started today, OBS told me all my assets were not in the in it anymore. So we were having a lot of fun. You missed some great jokes. There was some really <laughs> great. There was some laughs laughs to be had. Um, I'm stressed for you right now. Right? See? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Deep okay. breaths. Consume okay. more coffee. It's good for yeah. your heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. Is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Look at the Snorlax. The Snorlax <laughs> will distract you. Oh my gosh. That's a very good Snorlax. Okay. Are we? Can y'all? Can y'all still hear us? We're on the map page. Hopefully, you can hear us. Uh, I have to wait for my. I'm gonna uh, unmute. The. We're good. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Welcome Yay. to the Faith Forge Academy, where professional streamers do professional streaming things. Uh, That's us. <laughs> Chris, back to you. No worries, no worries. Uh... I am just setting up. You uh, bringing in some enemies? Turn orders. Some baddies. All right. Yep, that is all I am doing. So um, as we set the scene, we are below decks. At the bow, there are um, four uh, what look like citizens of Nareen, uh, one who's shorter than the other three and is gripping something large enough that they're using both arms, like they're holding it. Um, what that might be is difficult to tell because the other three kind of obscure um, that uh, figure and what they're doing. Um, it, the other three are holding off seven, um, we're calling them uh, thugs, uh, who are um, accosting them, weapons drawn. Uh, everyone except for the character who seems to be hugging some sort of package, item, person, whatever the case may be, is uh, wielding a weapon. Drassus and Morticia are um, closest to the uh, events. And I'm going to move your tokens. Uh, Yes, but it's in the appropriate spaces. Yes. So <laughs> you would be basically here and here. And Sunflower, that's perfectly fine. And then uh, Vincent is one step off of screen. Our um, friendlies or unfriendlies are all at the bow. Scribble on the map if you want. Yeah, that's what I'm going <laughs> to do. The bow, is, the bow is the front, right? Correct. Okay. okay, the bow is not the butt. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> is, is what's uh, the what's the other word? Word stern. Stern. Port. Stern. 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 Yep. So we're gonna put. Oh, uh, let's see. I was hoping I could figure out some sort of like word association. I got nothing, which is why for the life of me, I've played so many D and D campaigns on either ships or airships. Have I learned a single thing about nautical terminology? Zero. And no. it's almost oppressive. Well, I mean, what does the word postern mean? Posterior, postern, stern. There you go. Is that, a, is that a solid leap in logic? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying here. Yes. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna move these up a little bit. So your bad. These are the what look like Nareen citizens to anyone. The blue circle. <laughs> the blue circles. Blue circles. Blue is good. Okay. Classic. So. Blue look like they're defending themselves. Whether or not they're good is yet to be determined. Oh, that's true. Um, and the we're gonna go with. I just, whoops, did not mean to change the color of that one. Well, you're doing. Dress is already feeling good. He made somebody run. <laughs> <laughs> Getting amped right now. <laughs> uh, right. So I finally let's finished, go, Jurassic. I finally finished leveling up my character, and it should be noted that not only do I have a passive perception of twenty-two, woo, I can read lips. 
<laughs> Hell yes. I took the feet observe. So realistically, yes. Adam is the true MVP here. Morticia does not pay attention. Adam is the true MVP, <laughs> which is why we're going to find a way to also add Shadow Touched to your character. Ooh. So make a note of that. Ooh, that's interesting. I say ooh, but I don't actually know mechanically what that is in D&D. &D. It's, a, it's, a, it's a feat, it's an a feat. additional feat. Okay. Um, and it basically is, um, it adds a stat boost plus um, a variety of, or like a couple spells. Yep. Cool. You learn his ability. Yeah, it's a really good one. I took alert because I was like, Warforge, alert. Mm -hmm. I took Makes sense. I took charisma because I'm, a warlock, did. Because I'm a warlock. <laughs> and because you're just such a personable person. I mean, mm. come on. You know what? <laughs> charisma does not have to be personable. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's true. just influential. I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very true. You can become a better asshole. <laughs> yes. That is this how is that all works. very true. Improved all right. assholery. <laughs> mm -hmm. So at the top of the order is Morticia. Sitting on the shoulder of um, Drassus. What is your action? Okay, well, the first thing, Morticia slash Adam. Adam was kind of creeping on. You mentioned that there was a, uh, I believe it was the thug that is holding onto a package and kind of said something to the others. Mm, what? No, that's the, the nearing citizen, the one at oh, the very the bow. Citizen. That's, okay. that's kind of like protected by the other three. That's the one that's holding on to something. Okay. Can Adam see any of that? And what do they see? From this position. Don't forget, I'm on top of Drassus' shoulders. And yes. Adam is just a shadow, so like they do what they want. I'm going to say, yeah, they can. Uh, they will see that um, the person is very short and lithe in stature um not pixie short more mm. like halfling short okay. or gnome short something in that range and they are um or dwarf short mm. the, those those uh, types of of uh, groups and they are carrying or protecting a uh, canvas oh, sack of some sort that seems to be holding a solid object rather than soft objects. Just the way that the bag shows um, impressions of what's inside, you can tell that there's no like con compression of the item or items. Um, so whatever is in there is um, extremely solid in its um, uh, contents. Okay. Um, so Adam relays the information that you have said. Um, Morticia, broken telephone, it internalizes that info. And then with like an ear or a, a, her, like her mouth to Drassus' ear. <gasps> okay. So, not to alarm you, but I'm pretty sure those citizens are holding on to a rock baby. We have to be very careful to protect the rock baby. They're basically the nature's way of keeping the world going, you know? Is it Dwayne's son? Where are you? I'm, I'm, yes! not, I'm not actually in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so, what I'm actually going to do then, now motivated... Um, because, like, you painted a picture where, like, these thugs are beating up the citizens, and while we have the altruistic in our party, like, Drassus mm -hmm. is like, I'm gonna go help them, there's a battle, let's clack some swords. Morticia's interpretation of this is like, well, that's boring, but if they're fighting after a rock baby, that's motivation to get involved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what I would like to do... Um, Oh, can I sneak attack? I will say that because of the commotion and the fact that they are pretty intent on um, 
the conflict that they are immediately in mm -hmm. that yes you have you still have the element of surprise so, so i deal an extra 2d6 okay mm -hmm. with a ranged okay if i have advantage okay okay um target of five feet gotcha gotcha so i remember when i, I don't have adam sheet open right now but also he kind of counts as something else in their space um, so if you want, like, narratively, they can be distracted as well as Adam mm -hmm. being in their space would give me that sneak attack. So I'm just going to go ahead and shut up and shoot. Okay. How does a 25 feel? That feels like pain. <laughs> <laughs> Again, so Morticia's tiny-ass fairy pulls out this, like, uh, heavy crossbow the size of her and has to, like, load it up. It's got a little tripod stand, you know, just the top, Drassus' shoulder. So it's a little bit wobbly, if, you know, the airship's moving around a little bit and Drassus isn't quite very stable. Um, and then, like, the whole process to load it up, she has to, like, use her feet to, like, properly crank it back. And then, for damage, uh, 15 plus 8. That many. Nice. <laughs> to that one. So that one so that'd be 23 um and what would you wh yeah uh, what happens to this person before they slump over dead <laughs> they never even saw it coming nope um much less a crossbow going i think it's like it is a impeccable headshot for the lack of stability and like aim that you really thought uh morticia had this is the bolt right through the guy right through the uh, thug's forehead gotcha so because it's coming from behind it comes out through the forehead yes and oh, it doesn't just on the other side it doesn't fully Ooh. like ex it doesn't actually fully leave because the fletching gets stuck mm -hmm. but like the point comes through and so they're kind of like a unicorn <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, I live. Uh, <laughs> that is <laughs> so good. Gross, so, but very good. That one is gone. We're down to six of them. And these other two that uh, are immediately next to that person uh, do notice and shift their attention, along with the one at the uh, top here that. Um, Yeah, that uh, is out of range for anybody else. So they will turn their attention towards, Dr well, Drassus at this point um, with the shoulder cannon. Because um, without close inspection, that's kind of their first impression. Uh, so. I like that. Sunflower, you're next in the order. Oh boy, okay. From your um, vantage point, coming down the steps, you will see that three are turned and facing Drassus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but the others seem to be facing uh, the Nereen citizens that are in the bow that I've described previously. Right. Um, I think Sunflower is first of all going to uh, move because she wants to get a little closer to the action. Mm-hmm. Um, probably till about here, I want to say. Um, okay. I think she's going to take, before I dive into what she's actually going to do, for flavor tech's sake, um, Sunflower, as she comes down the steps and into the ship, pulls out from behind her a staff and a rod, and she's got one in each hand. Um, because that's some of the equipment that she has, and I think it mm -hmm. just looks badass to see a Warforge running down the steps and just going, hua, and pulling out two best massive sticks. Mm -hmm. Um, that all said and done, she uses the, um, what's it called? I forgot what it's called. She uses the staff, uh, and she is going to cast, um, she's going to cast Ice Knife. Uh, at the ones that are looking at the citizens. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's this one? Is that? That's one of them, yeah. Those okay. two, the two that are there next to the large uh, ballistas mm -hmm. and the one at the top that's in the row behind them. 
So that one. Yeah. Okay. Those Got three it. are still facing the citizens. Right. Um, she will aim for this one, I guess, because it's kind of in between the the, the three. So mm -hmm. that's the one she's going to aim for. Uh, and we are casting this at second level because she does not mess around. Um, 20 will hit. 20 will hit. All right. Um, and, and did, so did it automatically hold damage? Yeah, oh, it, it, gave you, it gave you the damage. Um, and so the, the dex save, though, is separate, right? Uh, yes, so uh, she's flung a shard of ice at the one that she was aiming at. Um, mm -hmm. On a hit, the target takes the piercing damage. Um, hit or miss, the shard then explodes. The target and each creature within five feet of it must succeed on a dexterity saving oh throw God. or take the cold damage. Oops, I might target the wrong people with this. Gotcha. <laughs> so I'm going to roll some dex saves. Um, Sorry, peoples. No worries, no worries, no worries. <laughs> I always forget that there's other people nearby that might also get harmed. I'm very bad at that. <laughs> and so is it all or nothing on the save or is it all or half? It looks like it's all or nothing. All or nothing on okay. knife. So, yeah. yeah. So one saves. Okay. Uh, for, that's the thug leader. Um, the one who got hit did not save. Excellent. Also take uh, the, one, the one next to him saves. And the citizens... Please save. One does not. The other does. Okay. So the very top one takes damage. Uh, a citizen looks hurt. The This one, uh, the one that you hit, is... Um, their skin kind of, like, frosts over, and they shiver a bit before they collapse. Um, the others save. Okay. So this person is uh, injured. I'm going to change them just so we remember to purple. So they're injured. I think Sunflower actually realizes that she's made a mistake and you just hear this gasp of horror from like behind Drassus and um, Morticia. Just like, oh God, like I, I, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, uh it's okay. Uh, they're, they're holding on to a rock baby. As long as the rock baby survives, we'll survive. Oh, 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 okay. I uh, don't know if that's comforting, but okay. Excellent. So next is going to be the lead thug who is still alive. And he's going to, instead of turning around uh, with whatever it was that came from behind, He's moving, he's advancing, focused on what's ahead. And uh, he will attempt to attack, um, let's see if he notices. Uh, he does notice. He's gonna attempt to attack the injured one. Sorry, I did not mean to cast again, that was an accident. Oh, no worries. And he strikes and hits. for five points of damage. Um, and then the other four that are involved, I'm just gonna go down the one that's still fighting citizens, uh, will attack and miss. Then the other three will close with Drassus. And Drassus, AC? Uh, 19. Miss, miss, miss. They all come in swinging at you. Uh, short swords uh, amongst them, uh, which seem to be good for close quarter combat, according to them. Uh, at least, assuming so. Um, and, uh, yeah. It is now Vincent's turn. Okay, so Vincent is above deck. Uh, I would he would I hear the fighting that's going on down below? Correct. The it was loud enough that you all heard it from off the ship. Okay, okay. Um, um, so Vincent is definitely still not in a rush. 
per se. Uh, but he will uh, walk casually down uh, at least to the stairs. Uh, still, mm -hmm. like, one hand on the cane, um, looking as smug as ever. Uh, when he gets down, uh, would anything stand out to him, having not actually seen what's going on? Um, well, the the dispersal of folks, there are three, um, as I described last time, more commonly clothed folks bearing short swords that are squaring off against Drassus. Uh, there are two of them that are um, focused on the uh, those at the at the bow. Mm -hmm. um, one of which um, does your character? What's their passive perception? Their passive perception is. Uh, let's. Where's my character sheet? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. It is uh, 15. Okay. Pro, um, do me a favor. Roll medicine. Roll if you medicine. also hit a 15 um, or better, you will notice the condition of the one that is hurt. Okay. A 22. There you go. So, yeah, you'll notice that one of them is severely injured. Um, and that's one of the and Niranians, that there's right? what's that one of the Neranians is severely yeah. injured yeah and they're all dressed as um, as though they are Neranian uh, citizens um, from your perspective you would say um, connected to a noble house of some sort if not nobles themselves oh okay <clears throat> then I'm gonna go down uh and how much movement would i have left once i get like kind of to the stairs what the... because you were not really you were taking your time mm. i would say your movement is probably used at the stairs okay okay perfect uh i'm going but to... you do have line of sight because you're elevated because of... okay uh then this one who's closest to the very injured, mm -hmm. I think, uh, well, first off, I'm going to use my bonus action uh, for my form of dread. Uh, okay. And uh, so Vincent's pale face will start to almost rot. Uh, the eyes will turn white, um, very like very undead-esque and kind of sink in a little bit. Um, and I think I'm going to... Uh, I'm actually going to use a little bit of his uh, racial traits as well. And okay. I'm going to say uh, in that, just kind of wanting to make it, make it a little bit more obvious, I'm going to make it look like my teeth are more vampiric than maybe naturally they are. Okay. Uh, if, you'll, if you'll allow that just oh, yeah, totally. than anything. So, so, so noticeable fangs. Your, your, uh, your canines now look like fangs. Yeah. Uh, and then I am going to... Let me, uh, sorry, I need to read a spell real quick. Oh, shoot, that's a bonus action, too. Damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to cast... Do I want to do that? Uh, no um okay uh, i'm gonna cast uh chill touch okay on on that the one who's closest to the hurt individual mm -hmm. which is a uh i have a plus nine to hit. okay oof for a 12 oh no I, it the, will not i wrote sorry i rolled twice on accident the first oh, one was a 17, 17 is yeah 17 will hit okay uh so that does Five necrotic damage, and then okay. uh, I think if I remember how the form of dread works correctly, since I hit them with one of my attacks, I can make that person make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, or they are frightened of me till the end of their next turn. Uh, DC 15. The hairs stand up on the back of their neck, though you may not be able to see that, as they have this 
unsettling feeling and they do not turn around like mm -hmm. they get hit and you kind of see their head cock a little bit as though they were to look and they decide not to um i'm gonna say that as the last thing i'm gonna and i was gonna say turn around and face me and lay down your weapons or i'm gonna take your souls <laughs> love it um No reaction from those in red. Okay. Though you do catch a glimpse of acknowledgement from a couple of the Nerinians, as though they acknowledge that you're there. <laughs> I think that makes Drassus look over the shoulder and raise yeah. an eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's, that's Vincent's turn. Excellent. So our citizens will... Miss and miss. Nope, that one hits. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay. And last but not least, miss. Um, clanging of swords, that sort of thing. Um, there is back and forth between them um, work, go, or, you know, uh, combat going on. Um, do, do, do. we have last but not least the for anyone that has the vantage point to see it the one in the back is um, casts a spell mm -hmm. and touches the shoulder of the injured one That takes us to Drassus. Kill okay. them all, Drassus. Uh, <laughs> so this one directly in front of me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Drassus sort of just smiles at him uh, and just like, mm, it's too late to run now, son. And let me see if I can actually roll good dice because it has not been good so far. <laughs> Bring the pain. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you do have uh, your D4 from the audience. Oh, Without yeah, guidance. then sure, I will roll the, the d4. You need, like, a four on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fourteen. You strike them. Hey! Excellent. The joints are loosening up. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. 14 damage. Mm -hmm. uh, still standing. I'm going to uh, immediately, after I swing the long sword down at him, I'm going to just come back up with my head with my horns uh, mm. and basically try to yeet him into the sun. Like it. Do it up. You, I mean, you better. deliver a devastating blow with the sword, but they. Are, they do not fall. Uh, yeah, that definitely hits. And another six piercing damage. So with what? Is, what is Drassus's strength? Uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. As Drassus, um. So Drassus strikes down with his blade, and is this the broken blade, or is this... No, I'm using my regular longsword. Regular longsword, okay. Um, it makes a devastating slash, and it the the their knees buckle a little bit, but they hold. Um, and as you come uh, down and then back up with your horns, 
you get him just right and toss him to the ceiling. <laughs> this person hits the ceiling and falls lifelessly to the floor. And Drasus just looks around and is like, uh, who's next? And I think, yeah, fuck it. We're going to do it. I'm a fighter. I'm an action surge. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The next one over, I'd say to my right. Okay. Take a, I'm going to just drop the long sword and says, uh, and say, your turn and um bring out relentless Mm -hmm. and just just bring it up two hand just bring it straight down over my head oh my god why (laughs) um let's see is that so too heavy for you young book (laughs) That will actually, that, that will, what will happen is that will hit with what I'm going to call a glancing blow. Okay. And so it does half damage. Okay. Hmm. Well, then let's see what happens. <laughs> that works. Okay. Um, already afraid of you. Uh, because of what just happened to the person next to him, it was a little hyper vigilant and a little, um, shall we say, uh, skittish. And they kind of bounced out of the way as the blade came and it caught them um, along one, uh, the one arm, um, their off arm. They basically took the blow there rather than. Um, the core of their self. Okay. And that's all I can do. They are now injured. So back to the top of the order and our uh, fairy ballista. All right. Well, now we're actually in range of some people so I can legally sneak attack as much as I want. Mm-hmm. Um. Was Drassus attacking the lead thug? Has that been established? One of these things? Uh, no, the lead thug is actually up next to the injured person. That's the uh, next one. <laughs> we clear these two. Okay. Um, well, Mortish has kind of been like hanging out, you know, trying not to fall off while you're slishing and slashing. And then finally, she's going to be like, All right, you've been taking your time long enough. Now watch them die. <laughs> And uh, just gonna go ahead and attack. You're okay. Twenty-one bullet. Yeah, yeah. For Twenty damage. And Jesus. who was it that you targeted? Oh, uh, why not this one? Okay. Um. Yeah. What happens to this one? Is it another headshot? No, they'll live if it goes through the throat. Uh, okay. I think it goes through their eyeball. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice and squelchy. Um, <laughs> you, will, <laughs> you will hear uh, bef- uh, as the as you fire, um, that uh, thug realizes that that crossbow is not actually mounted to the shoulder and is um, wielded by a pixie, and they go, "What is that?" And crumple to the floor. <laughs> oh, I love it. Sunflower. All right. Okay. Let's 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 say let's aim for this this leg bug again. Um, but this time, let's do it in a way where you know other people aren't going to get hurt in the process. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that looks like witch bolt. Okay. And that should do the thing. 19 will hit. Awesome. Any of them. So uh, which one are you shooting for? The, the lead thing. Okay. Uh, it has a 30 foot range, so you're going to need to move up. Oh, sorry. Can we say that I've moved up then? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, 
So you basically need to move up to the row in front of Drassus. Not a problem. And uh, 13 points of damage. Uh, they look severely injured as they are um, inundated with, is this like lightning style damage? That's lightning damage. Um, you'll notice when you cast um, this spell, you don't know if it's this spell or the fact that it's electrical damage, that the energy that's pulled seems to uh, kind of bounce around to the metal rivets and plates of the the hull um, as it's building, and then it coalesces above the character and launches down upon them. Cool. <laughs> and that brings us back to the lead thug that just got hit pretty hard. Um, this time, they attempt to turn again but they stop themselves short and um swing missing um the person in front of them who is also injured and that leaves two thugs that are left one will hit uh Nareen, um citizen for five and it is the same one, so they will flag is injured. And the next is attempting to attack Drassus and misses. Uh, could be the fact that you think you've disabled his off arm. Um, could be the fact that he's scared. Uh, between the cackling pixie that um, headshotted someone and the fact that you tossed his partner uh, to the ceiling and uh, with your horns definitely not interested in um, in in, in, um, <laughs> in fighting and more doing it out of obligation because they don't know what else to do mm -hmm. like the exits are blocked off there is no way out um, Vincent. Okay. Um, so their, their leader is looking bad, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the one who's scared of me. That's the one that refuses to turn around, but has, a, has almost attempted to twice. Okay. Um, I want to just... Let me, I, I, let me double check one thing. So I'm going to, still in my terrifying looking form, uh, call out in a decently loud voice to all three of them, say, um, you have about 10 seconds to decide if you're going to live or not. You have zero chance of survival if you continue to fight. So lay down your weapons, and you, very clearly talking to the thug, mm -hmm. face me, you coward. Do you need me to roll anything for that? I would like you to roll intimidation. And then just because of the circumstances, add a d4 on top of it. Sure, I would love to do that. I would love to add a d4 to that. For a 24. 24. Um, you will see that the one fighting Drassus uh, at this point, like very carefully, uh, like gestures to like trying to put down his sword and very slowly lowers it to the floor. Um, the one that you commanded to try and turn or to turn around and face you still cannot um, <laughs> because Good. there's nowhere for him to flee and so the only thing he can do is to basically avoid uh, that which he fears 
Um, but he will, uh, I want to see how desperate he is. Uh, he will drop to one knee um, and kind of like puts the point of his sword to the floor and leans against it um, as though he's using it to steady himself. Uh, the other thug will just kind of like drop his weapon and put his hands up at that point. Um, and then to, to the Nerinians, I'll say, um, I think you're free to tie them up, it seems. Uh, and they will um, actually uh, do uh, take care of that. And combat has concluded um, at Thanks. this point. Unless, Drassus, you have any last uh, like trailing action that you would like to take. No, I'm just going to stick the the uh, the sword before it starts talking back in the sheath. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Shut up, kid. That makes sense. So I will go ahead and close out the turn order. And um, we are, uh, after a few minutes, the uh, citizens of Noreen uh, will have actually um, procure, um, produced um, handcuffs of sorts, shackles, in which they... Oh. Uh, clamp them in irons and take them uh, one level further down um, to the cargo hold uh, for them to be held. Okay. I'd like to oh. follow them. I, I have. I want to talk to the one who was scared of me. Oh. Okay. How long does that effect list uh, last? Uh, the fear. The fear itself is just. Uh, till the end of my turn. So they wouldn't be innately scared of me. Gotcha. For now. Gotcha. Um, but I don't, I don't care if it's while they're, while they're being, uh, bound yeah. or once they're down, but I'm going to walk up to the one because he clearly mm -hmm. looks like a, the leader, correct? He was the one that was barking orders at the others. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put both my hands on his face mm -hmm. and say, you fool. Uh, what were you doing? Why Why are you here? Why are you bothering a noble house of Nereen? There's no way that ends well for you. I still, I, I still am looking super dead. Hmm. <laughs> super creepy. He, he stares at you almost like he's staring through you and says following orders do your friends know the same that you do they know what they know oh if you're going to speak cryptically I'm going to kill you <laughs> I'm not interested in that What do you mean by know then? Because do are I don't know that they know everything I know, but I also don't know what they know. You're not a very good leader then. I guess because <clears throat> tell me why you're here. Tell me what you're looking for. Tell me who sent you. And I'll let you live. How's that sound? We came for the package. What's the package? You'll see him kind of look uh, at the... Which now is a lot more um, noticeably a dwarven um, woman who is clutching um, a large rock canvas baby? bag. What? Rock baby? Yeah, rock baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced. Like, so that person would have had to have walked by Drassus and Morticia the whole time. Mm -hmm. Morty is just like, we gotta go see the rock baby. I've always wanted to see one. 
I think Drasus would, in that case, just start talking Dwarvish to this person, asking them if they're all right. I forgot you speak Dwarvish. She would politely, you know, greet you and say, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you and your friends. Of course. Uh, the creepy one, he's doing whatever it is he does. Uh, what but, uh, are you saying? Ask about the rock, baby. What is it that they so desperately wanted? Um, they seem to be here for this. And she'll open the canvas uh, bag. And inside, you will see a very large chunk of stone and ore. Rock baby! Yes, a rock baby. Yes. So oh my speak. god. Uh... <laughs> what is it named? Is it... Vincent, Vincent will turn from this person who he's talking to. Is, is it actually a, a baby? Drassus looks embarrassed. Oh, no. <laughs> but actually asked the question, is it a baby? <laughs> <laughs> he does it in Dwarvish. <laughs> so okay. Only y'all can Spared understand it. the that. embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, oh, Vincent also actually speaks Dwarvish, so. <laughs> oh, just says flower. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> even better. The 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 woman uh, the woman uh, kind of chuckles and says, "No, I didn't think so." It's, uh, <laughs> and switches to common and looks over. He's like, it's not a baby. Uh, it's never a baby. Oh, so it wasn't like a baby that was turned into a rock. That <laughs> happens all the time. What? 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 Huh? What? So, uh, tell us about your rock. <laughs> In common, please. <laughs> um, she will mention uh, that the um, what she's carrying is a large quantity of a um, of pure, well, of a vein of uh, pure fey iron. Wow. That explains why person who's, I've got my hands on their face, that explains why they're here, because that's worth a lot of money. Uh, looks back to him. That's why you're here, I assume? We were told to pick up a package. They said the dwarf would have it and that they wouldn't give it up without a fight. Who, I'm, I'm still on the who sent you. Like, who told you to pick up the package? If I tell you that, I'm dead. Uh, I cast Mind Spike. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Damn. You go hard. Uh, so that is a DC 17 wisdom save. This poor creature. Wisdom save. Uh, so they take 15 psychic damage. <laughs> R.I.P. Um, in their current state, they will collapse. Wonderful. Uh, I'll look to the next one and say, uh, who sent you? He said they were that you were worried about if you told us that you would not live. Uh, I hope I've erased that fear for you. Is this happening in front of everyone? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you got no shame. Awesome. <laughs> he looks at you and goes, he did? No. Oh, <laughs> I think Drassus would just be like, you're you're not gonna get very far with them. You'll just end up killing them all. So if you're gonna kill them, kill them. Or let them go. They are flunkies. <laughs> Alright. Uh I'm gonna 
Josh, this is. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put an asterisk. I'm not playing a good character. No. <laughs> if you haven't figured no. That out yet. <laughs> Didn't put Super that together yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I have. <laughs> I have a health potion, and I'm gonna pour it in the dude's mouth that I just killed. <laughs> oh no! You okay. can be a bad person. I don't think like in our lines and veils, it was like no bad people. <laughs> Live your worst. <laughs> I I'm totally not surprised by be encouraging this <laughs> at all. I'm not in the slightest bit. Uh, but I, I, I your worst. But I am. But I am going to say. Um, Uh, I, I'm gonna wait till I find out what that role was about. He remains unconscious. You don't think he's dead anymore, but he remains unconscious. That's fine. Um, I am going to uh, shape shift into an exact version of him, who's unconscious on the ground. Okay. <sighs> okay. This is just for when he wakes up. It's gonna be confusing. Um. This is getting creepier and creepier, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, thank you. That wasn't a compliment. Yeah, it depends on who you... <laughs> really depends on who you're talking to. Uh, looks back at the other two one more time and say, you're sure you're not... You don't know anyone above this fellow. If you think really, really hard about it. Like... In the far recesses of your mind probably even pay you if you if you told me the rumor was is it was ordered by one of the five houses but uh, i don't know okay that's good that's good information you don't happen to know which one of the five houses do you every one of them ended up mentioned depending on who you talk to that makes sense okay um i don't know do either of you three want to kill them or I, and then I turn to the Nairinians, or do you want to? It's it's really up to you. I... Uh, I'm going to wait for this fellow to wake up. You're making a lot of decisions here, Vincent. Not that I'm against any of them, but like, uh, who made you the leader again? I didn't understand that this was a leadership situation. I was just doing things. Well, you don't just kill willy nilly. Uh, sure. Willy or yeah. nilly, they're both dead. Adam, you definitely don't Adam do that. Says, no, I do. Who, which one? Which one was Willie and which one was Nilly again? <laughs> oh, whichever ones are dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Maybe I should have stayed retired. I, I feel like. Sunflower just like <laughs> sees this whole exchange going down and just like shakes her head. It's almost like she's like almost like dizzy all of a sudden from the whole from the whole exchange and like contemplating killing people and all of this kind of stuff. And all she can think to do is go to the person that she injured and go check on them and ask them if they're mm -hmm. all right. And you know, she I may mean, not have much skill in medicine, but she's gonna try and do what she can for them and she's going to apologize profusely. And you can't see it on her face, but maybe it can read in her body language. There's like a, there's like a, there's like a conflicted feeling within her. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. one shoulder is probably slightly higher than the other kind of a thing where it's like, she just feels very wonky and off kilter and she's not quite sure what to do about it. So she's just trying to do the one thing that's like a gut instinct for her right now. And even uh, that, I'm not sure, it's actually a gut instinct. So... Dead? Mm -hmm. Alive? I'm not making this choice. It's I was an prisoners. elected leader. It's their prisoners. They can decide what to do with them. We need oh. to figure out like this thing you have was so important to them that they didn't run away when they had the opportunity to. I mean, that, that bag is probably worth hundreds of thousands of gold. Doesn't it feel oh. like it's more to it than that, though? It's also, a lot of or is it just me? It's also like very important for making these ships fly. So it's like it's very important stuff. Oh. It's um. Mm. 
Drassus, do me a favor and give me a um, charisma roll with advantage. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I will definitely need the advantage on this one. <laughs> We can, move, we can move off the map at this point if you want to. That's so. hilarious. I rolled two These are where I get my good rolls on the thing that I <laughs> minus two on. <laughs> there we go. So that would be what? A 19? It's, it's a 15. Oh, a 15? There it is. <laughs> two 17s minus two. Is gotcha. That, yeah. Gotcha. So um, the dwarf will kind of look at you. And say in, in c- continuing in dwarvish at this point, um, you seem trustworthy. Um, <laughs> Vincent chuckles a little bit to himself. It's more than that, and she will remove the rest of the bag, and you will notice that the stone in which this vein runs through has been worked. Mm. It is some sort of artifact. Mm -hmm. There are runes and symbols etched into the stone. Sunflower. Sunflower. Can you read that? I know you're in squares. Um... Let's see. Of you all, um, Morticia and Vincent would probably notice because of Vincent's uh, particular attention to detail that he spent in the um, the uh, eightfold chamber and uh, Morticia's uh, perception. <laughs> this looks like the same stone that that place was made of uh with the um eyes of the rune keeper can i can i make out what's on the yes, what's on it my favorite oh yeah absolutely um some of it is um magic some of it is actually those eight symbols that you saw before mm. um I think for but just, oh go ahead Sorry. Mm-hmm. but the actual inscription um describes it, it's it's kind of like a uh like a, a scene description and it describes a scene of a uh, foundry that is in the mountains somewhere and it was the foundry in which the giant lords crafted their um greatest masterpieces is that is that a place that would be sort of like a a a myth to most people versus like a um something that most that people would think is real yes okay um, so I'll, I'll pass that along and and uh i i don't know i always thought this place was like a maybe fairy tales not the right way well, to say fairy it. tales are real yeah I, well, but I, myths are yeah, myths. a myth like a mm-hmm. like it was a story that like my mother told me when i was a child that there was this, this I always just heard it whisper like foundry in deep within the mountains where giants crafted like wondrous things I, don't, I, I mean I, I honestly didn't even know if giants were real oh oh absolutely you've never met one uh, no. great cooks really very good cooking culture amongst them <clears throat> interesting how would you even pick up anything that they make? I can't. 
you kind of, I kind of just hover over top. They and do then scoot not up have my hands that are sized for me at all. So sometimes I bring some with me. Sometimes I'll just eat with a stick or twig, depending on your perspective. <laughs> Got it. Mm -hmm. huh. Considering what all we have been through. Things that are not impossible seem to be becoming more and more possible. Mm -hmm. That's. I mean, I... no rock baby. She just kind of looks yet. at Ben. That's it. No, I. I mean, I. I agree with you. We. We've done a few things in the last twenty-four hours that I would have never dreamed of. Um, is this is this unconscious dude waking up yet? No, he's not. <laughs> Is, does anyone, ha does anyone have a bucket of water or something? Uh, We're on a ship, I guess. I can you not. You don't have a what? Oh, yeah. Of course, you don't have a water skin. Uh, and Drassus gives you his water skin. <laughs> actually, actually, now that you say that, oh, I do actually carry one of those. <laughs> Forgot. Thank you for the reminder. I, I'm, I'm quite <laughs> parched. Um, and we'll, we'll pull, pull his out. Uh, you probably need that more than I do it anyways. Uh, mm. and, and just dump, dump his whole water skin out on this, this dude, hoping it'll wake him up. And it does not. <sighs> oh, gosh. Make sure he doesn't drown. You are no good at this. I... <laughs> no talent. Sure. Uh, you wake him up then. Okay. Maybe I'll just around. <laughs> Medicine <laughs> check? <laughs> uh, from who? None from, me. I mean, Vincent, because okay. he's the <laughs> one trying to wake him up. 13? Ooh, I'm going to use You have my, no idea why I'm he's not my, waking up. I'm going to use my Pact of the Talisman thing because I'm holding my Talisman. I can add a D4. Okay. Nice. So a 16. This looks like the reactions and everything remind you of a, um, what you might call it, uh, coma. Oh. oh! I might have gone a little bit too hard on him in retrospect. You think it's a side effect of the mind spike? Have you ever heard of the word lobotomy? I have. Oh, you should teach me. Oh, I, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought there was a correlation. <laughs> no, oh, silly. I, perhaps maybe when this is all over, we could we could go to school together and maybe learn. It's probably useful. To lobotomy? Yeah. Yeah. I hear there's no. lots of lobotomy schools. Uh huh. Oh, Just, absolutely. That's all they teach. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds right. What is wrong with you both? Who would let you near? Never mind. I. <laughs> I don't, uh, this is so, semi terrifying, what? honestly. No, 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 it's fine. Uh, what? What are we deciding then? How do I want to proceed? What are we thinking with our brains that are not mush? I'm thinking we should take out the whimsy stone and see where that takes us from here. This was um. That is how we got here, huh? Mm-hmm. Kind of. I could perhaps um. If he was really hired by the houses, and I can look like him, I could just walk up and say, like, oh, we got in a big fight, and I, I can't remember what was I, like, sort of do one of those things. And see if we can figure out who hired him. <laughs> Are we even back at Croc? Sorry, Tin Trap, but, like, we, the, the, the ship broke off. Weren't we, like, floating away? I don't even know. You were, <laughs> <I forgot>. yeah. <laughs> Shit. Um... Really quickly, Stephen, before we go any further, because I'm pretty sure it's going to come up, um, is there a naming convention in Noreen that I should be aware of? No. Okay. You can make one. Uh, I just... <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm assuming at some point you're going to want to know who these people are, so I'm making sure yeah. that they have names. <laughs> cool. I dig it. So... Who has a stone, by the way? Who has it? Oh, I, Vincent. I have it. Um, <laughs> we we came here because of it was because uh, Morticia, right? Was who was following it and just leaving. I it found behind. my leaf. 
Yeah. Uh, here, you got us here. Kind of. I, guess. I don't need another leaf. It, it might. I'm just going to throw this out there, Morty. It might be more mm -hmm. than just about leaves. I don't know if I believe you, but I'll stand on it. Because, I mean, the last time we found, before you, we found, we found Rocky. Or Dwayne. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Rocky. Who's Rocky? I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll pull the stone out and set it on the ground. Uh, fine. But if I get another leaf, somebody else has to wear it. I'll wear it. <gasps> yes, sunflower. It would look so good. Okay, okay, and like I'm gonna jump on that stone. Uh, and then touch it with my bare hands. <laughs> okay. Um, as you jump on the stone, uh, make a dex save for me. Okay, I'm alright at that. You know, as the rogue that I am. Oh, how's an 11? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you start to spin, and you are losing your balance. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! What? Why am I spinning? Oh, I'm gonna throw up! Uh, I'm gonna stand on it again and touch it. You alright? <clears throat> it spins again. This time you're prepared for it, and you're spinning. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if anybody had these as a kid, but like back in the 90s, there were these little fairy things that had a rip cord attached to a base. And if you ripped it, it yep. would spin up in the air. <laughs> yes! Yep. Yep. My little um, sisters had those. Yes! That's 100% <laughs> what Morty is doing. Just spinning and getting very dizzy. I don't think it's telling me anything. Who? <laughs> Are you even enjoying this? No! Oh, no. <laughs> then stop. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hold on to a little railing. Or die railing. <laughs> I don't want to touch it anymore. Somebody else's turn. Was there, was there anything that, like, happened on it? Um, besides spinning? <laughs> we might need, like, an arcana. Do you remember the last time that it spun? Oh, no. did that mean we were in the right place? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does Vincent come to this out loud? Uh, yeah, I'll say, I'll say, I think we're where it wants us to be. As much as a skeleton. Oh, that's, that's, that's disgusting. Clean that up. <laughs> I was dizzy. I don't care. That's gross. <laughs> You're gross. I... Look at you. I look, I look like the human who's unconscious on the ground. I don't look undead right now. I don't... What's your problem? Yeah. Gross. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, process. I'm gonna go hang on your shoulder again. I do not like this place. We need to make some friends. What do we do? I'll, I'll look over to the group of Nerinians. Uh, so, this is probably gonna sound a little bit odd, but... Uh, this the spinning stone told us to come here. I assume to that it has something to do with this situation with with the giants and the 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 ore you have. Um, we recently found another place that was only kind of spoken about in myths and legends. Um, I guess, is there anything we can do to help you? Well, I mean, <clears throat> one of the um, others speaks up and steps forward. A uh, well-addressed uh, Nerinian citizen um, a, I would say, like, dark brown skin, uh, elven ears, um, chiseled features and says, well, uh, if one of the five families is involved, as was rumored, um, we should make haste to our destination. We were only stopping over in Riverheart. I don't even know how they knew that we were there. Oh. Where's your destination? 
and um, the uh, a different one of them, uh, slightly shor shorter, similar features, um, uh, and uh, a female uh, approaches with a map and says, here, in the mountains. Oh. Uh, okay. Maybe let's rewind. Um, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Morticia. Uh, that's my friend Adam. And it kind of looks like Morty is pointing at like Drassus's butt or his back. Mm -hmm. Um, pointing at her shadow. Um, we want to join your crew. I think. Am I doing this right, Drassus? Well, I appreciate that, Morticia. My, uh, you can call me. Um, Nayo. Uh, Nayo. We... Pleasant making your acquaintances. Yes, it was very fortuitous that you all came aboard. Mm -hmm. uh, we were quite outnumbered. Oh, we could uh, tell. But, um, I'm glad that you wish to join us because I was going to say, if the five families are involved, I do not wish to return to Riverheart right away. Um, I would rather just continue on. Um, and so, if you all don't mind, uh, I would, uh, I would like to um, send Jamba here and points to the third of their uh, party, um, uh, also dark-skinned uh, human, um, and they uh, give you a nod and uh, send him to the captain's deck and to. Um, get us back on course. Can, can we, Excellent. Can we meet the captain? No, I gotta stop. I do want to meet the captain, but maybe we should finish with some interactions. You, you have. Wait, who is the captain? And he points to Jamba, who's leaving. Oh! I miss her! I thought Jamba was going... Bye, Jamba! <laughs> Thanks, captain. I feel very accomplished. This is good. How long do you think the uh, the trip will take? Mm. Depending on the winds, day and a half. Okay. So but we also need to make sure that we find the right place in the mountains. So it may take a little longer searching. Fair enough. Of course. Um, do you want us to keep these three alive or anything? Or and uh, Vincent will Vincent will change back into what you are all used to him looking like um Make the gods yes unnecessary death is unnecessary hmm. you wouldn't happen to have a um a hold we can stick them in till we uh make it back to port uh, he said, we'll stick them in the lowest uh, cargo hold um, and keep them shackled and fed, and that should be that should suffice. Sounds good to me. Um, I guess, is there any place we can, like, be out of your way? This is, obviously, this is your ship. Is there any place that we can help while we're on your ship? Well, I mean, you all are welcome to uh, take the um, empty bunks here in the cabin deck and um, join us uh, when we embark uh, or when we um, visit the mountains. Uh, that is the place on the map that my sister so kindly pointed out. Um, her name, um, and she'll introduce herself as uh, Karis, um, uh, Karis Akraxador. Um, and she will say, uh, yes, this is where Brina, uh, referencing the dwarf, um, this is where Brina believes the foundry is, somewhere in this area, based oh. on dwarven lore. Okay. 
this artifact came to our family's possession um honestly a long time ago well, there's not really clear records of provenance uh so we decided um that we were curious and it's led us to this adventure of sorts but um Can I ask you a question? Yes. Do you believe in the gods? <laughs> the gods are assholes. Not all of them. No, all of them. But, it completely. Every single one. Yes. <laughs> They're returning. All of them? We don't know which ones or when. Oh, no. But... I don't know how much you know about elves. But... Elven souls have a tendency to leave of their own volition. When the planes were separated, there was no place for them to go, so they made a place, a pocket dimension of sorts. And, well, at least some of them did. Recently, we caught word from one of our ancestors that that pocket dimension has portals that are starting to appear. They don't stay for very long, but one soul uh, successfully entered the portal and returned that it was a bridge to the afterlife meaning the planes are being restored Vincent's eyes get super wide with the afterlife comment <laughs> if this is true that means that the gods shall return and if the gods return and there is no... protection from their whims. We could have another devastating war amongst them. I, I whisper to, to uh, Drassus, Assholes! <laughs> um... Kara's kind of giggles at that and uh, there is rumors of the Order of Eight a group of groups that once was formed to some say to protect the gods from the Ascendants or the Celestials from the Ascendants. Others say to protect humanity from those who sought immortality. Regardless of their purpose, they had access to artifacts and power that allowed them to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with gods. If they're returning, these myths are worth pursuing. So we need to prepare to face off with gods. We need to find out if there are any tools to be able to protect us in case the gods go to war again, yes. Like a weapon? Ooh, can I hold a big hammer? Like bigger than Drassus? Can Why does it have I'm to be a sure. weapon? Why does it have to be destruction? <gasps> oh, could it be a Kleenex? Uh, a tissue. A tissue of totality. <laughs> <sighs> and I got ideas. Uh, and they are very creative. Oh, thank you. Um, during this conversation, is, as um, uh, 
Morticia is coming up with some brilliant ideas. Uh, Vincent's going to kind of step over to uh, Sunflower and say, um, I couldn't help but notice that uh, you seem to be, I don't know if conflicted is the right word, going, going through something. Are you okay? I am. I, I, to be honest, I don't know if I'm okay. I mean, I don't even know where this stems from. I don't know why. It almost feels as if my, my own soul is fighting with me. And I don't understand why. It's just this... And she, like, looks at her hands again. She's, you know, obviously made of metal and she kind of flexes her fingers and... I am made of organic and inorganic material and yet I can feel my own existence, my own soul fighting me like a like a heartbeat fluttering much too fast like an anxiety or an inquiet within me and i don't know what it is and i don't know if i'm supposed to agree with you when you say you want to kill someone or disagree with you and i don't know if i'm supposed to feel bad about hurting people or not and i don't know if i'm supposed to feel excited about these gods or not i don't know anything about anything and i'm really to be honest just baffled right now uh Vincent will sit down, kind of quietly contemplating those words. Say, um, so I've, uh, I've lived a long time. And I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure the right way to say it. Shut up, Drassus. <laughs> <laughs> um, emotions, feelings aren't things that you're supposed supposed to have. They're not like, there's not a right choice for what you feel. So what do you want to feel? What do you who do you want to be? Do you want to be uncomfortable with the fact with the violence? Do you want to which part of that conflict feels like you? That's the problem, Vincent. They both do. And I don't know. It's it's as if I'm being torn in two. Part of me agrees with you when you say to kill them all, and part of me says no. It's waking up with no memories. It's been difficult remembering who I am, or what I am, or where I came from. And I know that I was once something, perhaps, but I'm also something else now. So it always feels like there's a, a duality in me. I know that uh, feelings are not necessarily always going to be straightforward. Even when I was back in the tower at the academy, I would have some days that were very beautiful with the sun shining and all I wanted to do was cry, even though I can't really cry, but I felt sad. And one of the professors told me that it was okay because emotions are, are messy and confusing, but I don't know what to do when they all feel like part of the same thing. I don't know. Does, that doesn't even make sense anymore. Uh, it makes more sense to me than I think maybe you may think. Really? A, a wise person once told me we contain multitudes. That they're, whether we have our memories or not, which which that I'm sure adds a whole other layer to, to all this that you're feeling, but... Emotions are complicated. Emotions are messy. Emotions are confusing. And especially if you don't know who you are and you want to find that out. So I hope you find out who you who you are. And, and I think uh, that sounds like a bunch of bull. <laughs> You get to decide who you want to be now. Mm-hmm. Whatever you used to be, doesn't matter. Are you sure? Especially if you can't remember, then it's perfect. Then you can just remake yourself as whatever you want. But what if I do remember? You can't ever fully escape from who you oh. are. It always will impact who you are. You can choose to walk away from that, but it is still there. Hmm. 
you all have given me much to think about. And although it feels like I got three different answers at the same time, I think I understand all three. So thank you. Glad to help. Would, would you feel a little bit happier if I gave you the leaf on my head? Yes, I would. And she like leans down so that um, Richie, she can put the leaf on her head. <laughs> It's All better perfect. now. Well, like I said, I don't know anything about these gods, and I don't know whether their return is a good thing or a bad thing. I only know the world around me, and it sounds to me like them returning is a bad thing, but I don't know if them returning is a good thing. Perhaps for them it's a good thing. Basically, I don't know what I'm doing. But whatever decision you all make, I will trust and I will go with. I think Drassus pats Sunfar on the shoulder with a heavy hand. Is like, well, guess what? No one really knows what they're doing. I suppose that's a comfort. I like to pretend I do a really good job of it. Adam always you knows do. what they're doing, but uh, it's a guessing game for me. Well... It's nice to know that we're all guessing our way through life, I suppose. It's kind of nice. And over the course of um, your trip to the uh, mountains, you'll have time to rest and to interact with the other four aboard. Uh, you will learn that Brina is the... Um, uh, is Brina Shatterforged, uh, the daughter of a very famous smith um, from this region. And um, known quite well for being able to repair um, artifacts. You will learn about the brother and sister, Nayo and Karis, um, they are um, vassals of a noble house of Nareen, and um, they have been doing what they can uh, to pursue these more mystic elements as they uh, pursue connection that their family has to one of the Order of Eight. Jamba um, Jamba Aminat is the captain of this ship. Um, he has been the captain of this ship for many years and um, voluntarily came along on this trip um, uh, to help aid in the travel uh, to and from wherever the siblings wish to go. Mm. And in your resting time, you'll find that the events of the past, I don't know, less than a day or so, have left a mark. Sunflower, the first time that you close your eyes and stop thinking, you get visions of that moment in the Eightfold Chamber when Duan returned home. You see the heart glow. You see him say goodbye and a spectral still forming version of Arias thanks you as well as they return to the plane uh, the elemental plane of earth in that moment 
you would recognize that something has shifted in your core. There's a different type of energy or level of energy um, in the core of your form. And there's a different kind of understanding of, shall we say, body awareness of sorts for a Warforged. Yeah. And um, you will gain the Artificer Initiate feat on top of whatever else you've taken while you've leveled. Oh, damn. Okay, cool. Thank you. Oh, that is so cool. Um, Adam and Morticia have a handful of conversations that leave their impression. There are real opportunities for friends on this ship. Yeah, friends and laughter. Mm hmm. These Nerinian elves are um, very uh, approachable and uh, seem knowledgeable of Fae and um, are extremely welcoming to you. You'll notice that. The sister, Kairos, she wears a hair clip, hairpin that is very similar in its shape and design to the one that your sister had once worn and that you keep in your hair. Uh, probably that means instant best friends. If uh, Morticia gets a chance to like zoom at her head mm -hmm. and a thousand miles a minute words just word vomiting about how amazing that that Brit is um, the color, the style, the sharpness the way it's placed in the hair you look magnificent and just like a cascade of compliments all centered around that hairpin mm, love it <laughs> um, I think instant best friends is important and is is a given <laughs> <laughs> doesn't bond over hairpins. Come on, people. Um, Vincent, you have gotten a wide variety of information in the past uh, day or so. Things that you only may have thought were rumored, maybe hoped had been true or not, um, are now seemingly real. Um, And if that's the case, then rumors of restoring one's soul may also be real. Maybe they aren't just myths. I think I think when like as as this trip was happening, you'd see Vincent a lot of times on like kind of the side of the ship, leaning over uh, with his cane in his hands, just kind of rubbing the skull on the top of it, looking out very, very deep in thought. And um, your character um, will gain um, skill expert in addition to what you already, uh, whatever you've taken as leveling up. Mm. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, Morticia will gain Shadow Touched. Ooh. Um, as she and Adam kind of reconnect to the world. Yay. Drassus, the name Shatterforge reminds you that there is a dwarf that can reforge the sword. Mm -hmm. And as fate may have it, Brina is the daughter of that smith. Ooh. 
there have been questions. <laughs> Not necessarily a reveal of the sword just yet, but there have been mm -hmm. questions. And um, one thing that he, uh, Drassus does remember is that the red steel that is used to craft this sword, the rumor has always been that it was uh, particularly connected to the um, giant clans, the giant smiths, uh, that it turned red from the blood of enemies. Um, but specifically that it was of giant craft. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. <sighs> Fire giants in particular. I was just looking for in my notes. Um, there is a maker's mark on the hilt. It's an ancient rune. And uh, Brina will be able to confirm that it is giant script, but it is a name or like it's a maker's mark. So it's, it's connect. It's not part of the language in per se or per se. It's just in that Sorry. style. Mm -hmm. And so without a reference, like a, basically a Rosetta stone, just like a heraldic symbol, it would be difficult to um, decipher. Got it. I think after a few discussions, Grassus will tell about the sword and tell about his son's mm. soul being captured in it. Mm. Okay. And but not to everybody. This would just be between me and the Smith. And mm -hmm. I because I because Drassus wants to get soul basically out of the sword and the sword repaired. Mm -hmm. And Drassus also, when we were talking about afterlives, Drassus actually breathed a sigh of relief almost when that happened, because that means there's opportunity for him to potentially meet back up with his wife and get his son out of this sword and his soul to rest. And with it, I know I mentioned it earlier, um, mm -hmm. Drassus gains the slasher feet. Um, top of whatever else they've taken so far. That's very cool. I don't know anything about that. What does that mean for you? Uh, for slashing, what is it? Slashing damage crits. Mm -hmm. uh, I add an extra die, if I'm not mistaken. And, and there was something else. It, once a day, I believe, when you make a hit, you can knock someone backwards, I think is what it is. Hmm. Like there it is, slasher. Oh, once per turn. Oh my you god. Can reduce, you can reduce the speed of a target by 10 feet. You yes. don't knock them back. Okay. And then when you score a critical, you grievously wound that creature, and they have disadvantage on attack rolls until the start of your next turn. Synergizes very well with my horns, because I can gorge oh. someone and knock them back, too. So yep. knock them back and make them lose speed. Amazing. Yep. Damn. That's so good. So, um, but yeah, those are the revelations that come to you all as you make your trip to the mountains in search of this foundry. I, th I think th if I know we're, we're almost done. Mm -hmm. Can I do one more thing before we, <laughs> sure. before we wrap up? I think at some point I'm going to walk over to Drassus and uh, kind of clear my throat. <clears> throat> uh, you're right, you know. What? I've been dead for a long time. Or not quite dead for a long time, but definitely not alive. Uh, yeah. I'm 
Sorry, you cut out. What happened? What happened? You know how uh, we get to make choices in life. In life. Yep. I made a pretty bad one. And uh, I guess. I can't tell you how bad I want to die. <laughs> You'd I, be surprised how relatable that is. But if it happens now... This is bad things will happen. Anyways, uh, I'm probably going to make choices that you won't agree with. Listen... We're all going to make choices that uh, ruffle feathers or what have you. But uh, Drassus takes off the, the sword, back, sits it down in front of him. I killed my son with this blade. Shit. His soul is trapped in it. And neither me or him are whole because of it. So until I can fix this, until I can fix him, I can't fix me. And so whatever decision you have to make, you make it, but don't stand in my way. You know, uh, <laughs> my goals might align more than you think. So to find fate brought us together, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. It sucks. But, uh, yep. I'll, I'll raise my cane up almost like a salute to, uh, to finding the afterlife, I guess. To finding the afterlife. I'll pat Drassus on the shoulder and then, uh, just walk away. Drassus kind of just sits there, <laughs> snorts a bit. Still an asshole. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I think that's a perfect, perfect way to end this episode. Oh my goodness. Oh. Bravo. Y'all, this is so fun. Chris, this is such a fun story. It really oh, is. Lord. 100%. Oh, percent. oh man. Well, everybody uh, in chat, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, thanks for coming on this journey as we explore who these characters are and see what they can reclaim about themselves uh, for mm -hmm. good or for less good. Evil? For <laughs> <laughs> um, not great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we will be back again uh, next week, uh, life willing. Uh, and if you have been enjoying this story and you like the world of Avastria that we're playing in, um, we've got an episode of the podcast that comes out on Friday. We have an episode literally every Friday. Uh, more, more and more story. Um, so if you go to FayForgeAcademy.com or search for FayForge in your favorite podcast app, uh, you'll find us there. Um, we also have three other mini campaigns very similar to this one that are all on our YouTube channel. Um, and all of these are all interweaving the world and the lore that you're hearing, uh, the gods waking up, all this stuff. It's all tied together. Um, so hope you've been enjoying it. Uh, thanks again to Roll20 uh, for having us as a part of their Spotlight program and providing us with a lot of cool tools to make these really fun characters and to do a lot of the extra stuff that Chris is giving us that are outside the normal character progression. Um, it's very fun. Uh, and with that, why don't uh, we're going to start with Chris this time. Tell the people where else they can find you, what else you're doing, because uh, these wonderful people uh, do a lot, uh, and it's all really, really excellent and amazing. So, Chris. Well, thank, thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Geary. You can find me on Twitter, at Chris Geary. Um, I am uh, the one of the designers of Omens Rising and uh, that group. Um, we're kind of in the behind the scenes stage where there's not a whole lot to show because a lot of it's in process right now, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to share more of that soon uh, with the progress that we make. Uh, one of which is we are currently pursuing uh, or looking for, or the art director is um, 
looking into a cover artist and cover art will be started relatively soon. Um, I'm also on um, a, I'm a guest on a arc on Nexus Adventures over on the Hype Goblins channel on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, where I play Vordrek, a Gloomstalker spore, Circle of Spores druid who is a grave um, keeper, night shift uh, for a large city. Um, and uh, he's dealing with some uh, shenanigans that are going on in his graveyard and um, uh, how that interacts and interweaves with the core cast. So come check us out. All right. Mm. Prince. Oh, hey. Hey, everybody. I'm Prince, also known as Dimples and Dice around the internet. I'm a TTRPG slash variety streamer that you can find over on my channel, Dimples and Dice. Uh, I'm also uh, the storyteller for Vampire the Masquerade Philly by Night over on my sister station, Rolling These 20s, every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and I DM a uh, new D&D campaign over on my own channel uh, called Wayward Revelry. Uh, that is a Wild Beyond the Witchlight campaign on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern. I am on a bunch of other things, a bunch. So if you want to know all of the things that I'm involved with, follow me on Twitter because I don't like listing all of them. Not because I don't want to promote my shows, but because there's so many and I don't want to forget anybody. <laughs> uh, Leona. Hello, I'm Leona. You can find me on Twitter at the Leona Maple. Uh, I too do too many things. I am a part of Omens Rising. I am a part of this show. I am a part of a stream on Friday nights uh, over on the Wandering Society. So you're going to want to check that out. That's where you can find me next. Part of a bunch of other stuff, podcasts and things. Um, so you should definitely head up my Twitter to find out where you can see me next or hear me next. Um, beyond that, I am your friendly local intersectionality consultant for tabletop RPGs, books, board games, whatever the heck you're working on. Let me help you. Let's let's make it even more phenomenal than it already is. Uh, and yeah, that's 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 me. Thanks, y'all. Can I add one more thing? I just thought about it, and I think this was kind of important. <laughs> I am on a stream uh, tomorrow night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time, if I'm not mistaken or 7 p.m. Eastern time on the French Touch channel. We're gonna be raising money for Take This. Uh, it's a D&D one shot. Uh, it is uh, a bunch of people at a soiree. It is an investigation Ooh. game. Ooh. So uh, do come check that out. I'm playing one of my absolute favorite characters who's a Warforged named Matrix. Hey. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, MB. Hello, I'm your non-binary busy bee. You can find me on Twitter as at B underscore Zelda. I'm a podcaster, a member of the Broadswords, host of Anime Attaché, a player on a 12-sided story podcast, One Shot Network, and Iron Adder Reforged. I am a TTRPG streamer. Look at my schedule on my Twitter account. I'm going to be posting a new one today because I don't know what I do. <laughs> I am also the community manager for D&D Adventures League, so if that's the community you play in, please don't yell at me. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and I'm Steven. I am at the underscore bad DM on Twitter. I do stuff at the Fae Forge Academy quite often. And then also, you may have just heard mention uh, a podcast called Anime Attaché. I also am on that that podcast where B, myself, uh, and my partner Kelsey, uh, I, I point behind because she's actually behind my green screen right now. Um, uh, hi, Kelsey. We, we talk about anime. B is our anime expert, and we are the students. Uh, and we talk about uh, Cowboy Bebop currently. Uh, so we go through mm -hmm. the first season of of different animes. So yeah, we're animebies. Um, no, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. worst. Um, but yeah, uh, so we do that, and then and then yeah, I'm here doing lots of Fae Forge Academy stuff. Um, so with that, we're going to go raid. Uh, we're gonna go do some more Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Geekly is Geekly Inc is doing a stream. If I remember right, it's a Rime of the Frost Maiden one, but I might not be remembering right. So we'll find out together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tim Tim Lanning is uh, the the DM, and he was the first ever guest on Fayforge. So that's a fun little little connection for y'all. I remember that. Yeah. Aww. Yep. Turnip, turnip, the Fay <laughs> child, the lost child. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks for being here, and we will uh, we'll see y'all next week uh, as we get the the raid queued up. Um, stay here, and then go give lots of love to the Geekly people. All right. We'll see y'all next time.